Hello and welcome to another Looking Beyond Black Ops 2 multiplayer map video. This is going to be episode 8, which is our second last episode in the multiplayer realm of things. Today's video is going to be the Vengeance DLC, and so we will have four maps today. So, let's get right on with it. Our first map we'll be looking at today is Uplink, which isn't as amazing as you think it'll be. What's behind this glass wall? Well, if we take a look, there's a couple machines in here, but they don't have any collision to them. You can walk right through them. There's not really a purpose to this room, other than just appearance, obviously, but, uh, yeah, at least we got something here. Through this inaccessible door, you can take a look, but unfortunately, you won't find anything special in these kind of rooms. Sucks, but what else can you expect? Let's check out this aircraft behind the spawn. So in here, it's uh, kind of low resolution, not super low, but low enough that it's definitely saving quite a few resources. It's akin to the aircraft in Vertigo, but uh, a little less detail to it. So what's going on down here? Well, if you take a look, it's just this sort of rotating component, I guess you could say. On the other spawn, I wanted to see what was going on with these buildings, being reminiscent of Solarium, and they do have collision inside them, which is cool. You can also check around the back elements of the map itself, and only parts of the building do in fact have collision, but here's something that's kind of interesting. Part of this building, which is completely inaccessible, has collision, weirdly enough. There's this brick block that you can stand on, but the rest of it is entirely ghost-like. Thought it was kind of interesting, so worth a segment on this video, I guess. So, Uplink is like transit in the sense where they hide a lot of empty and open space with fog. They use that so the map looks more filled in than what it actually is. Because aside from this big mountain right here, every other part of the map besides Uplink itself is just a 2D skybox piece. Aside from the fog. Now, as I'm talking about the mountain, you gotta admire it. It's kind of nice. The waterfall's a really cool addition to it with a few buildings and the satellite and everything like that. It's just a nice asset to Uplink itself. Now, I hate to tell you guys this, but you've probably noticed that Uplink doesn't have a whole lot to display, which is rather unfortunate. And the thing is, the entirety of Vengeance is like this. Well, Cove especially, given the fact that it's supposed to be this deserted island with so little around it. It's unfortunate, but yes, this episode will be shorter as a whole. Next up is Detour, and it's probably got the most goodies out of bounds, I guess, technically speaking. There's this door with a hole in it where if you look through, you're just trapped into this black cube of a room. Sorry, black rectangular prism of a room. Unless you shoot it, then when it's illuminated, you can see it's not completely black in there, but yeah, just a small little thing. In here is actually a fully fledged... Uh, Runnable space, I guess you could say you can run around in here. There's solid walls and everything like that But nothing special beyond that. I wanted to check this inaccessible door to see if there's anything in there And I fell to the surface below, but I don't really know what's going on We are now left with the problem that there's not really a lot more to explore We have the same case with this room over here as the other side, but Beyond that, yeah, there's just not a whole lot going on with the middle of Detour, so we won't be spending a lot of time here, specifically. We'll still check out the background elements and everything like that, it's just we won't be spending a good chunk of time inside the map itself, unfortunately. So at this point, we're done with the inside part of the map. Again, there's not a whole lot going on, so we can check the outside behind the spawn end. Yeah, quite the uh, traffic jam going on. But don't get your hopes up too quickly because the road does give out in quality real quick and then collides with a 2D wall of trees and then just keeps going a little bit past that. Also, Google Maps has seen a lot of better days. But there was a technique used here, I think. I could be wrong about this. There was a technique that was used here where I think they layer parts of the building with this uh, like transparent orange wall to give it that sunset light look. That wasn't all I found here. Of course, we have art on the building. Why not? I finally figured out that this building might be saying tough on it. I'm not sure. Of course, Zelva makes a return. Cola, of course. Welcome back. The shark. I didn't see Getty, though, but I did want to test out the water. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? 
It is in fact swimmable water. Our job is done. From here, I was just looking at buildings to see if there's any chance of seeing Getty. I had a genuine interest in tracking down a potential Getty image, but unfortunately that seemed impossible. It's interesting that there is a lot with the tour, but at the same time, not really. It's a lot of the same thing. So it does make your time here a little shorter, but it's still cool that it feels so vibrant and alive compared to the other maps in Vengeance. This bridge right here will be our last stop with a couple of things we found here. So obviously the bridge itself is low quality and doesn't really have a whole lot of anything to offer. The boat here is kind of nice. It's a little cute detail. There's also a couple other boats up ahead like sailboats and such that you can take a look at, which are nice touches nonetheless. Interestingly enough, you can't really see the map from much of a distance. Most of the map will become invisible once you're too far out. If you are expecting anything particularly cool about Cove, unfortunately, you're not going to get it. There's a couple things here, enough to maybe service us for a minute. If you look at this jet engine, you can see that it's submerged under the map. This is what's interesting about Cove. I'm sorry, there's just not enough here. This is one of the maps where you can actually confirm the water is swimmable, but, uh, yeah, you would normally die. I want to see if any of these rocks had collision or anything like that, and no, not really. I also want to take the liberty of checking this boat, but there was this invisible barrier preventing me from getting to it. And no matter how many times I tried to get into it, it wouldn't let me be in there for very long. Still thought it was cool. Looking at this broken ship here, I thought maybe there could be something cool here, and other than it, just aesthetic stuff, while it is nice, it doesn't really have anything special for us, but what I did find out is that there was this wall here. There's a wall that surrounds the entire map, like a square. You can't see it because it's too far ahead in actual multiplayer, but if you have mods, you can take a look at it. But you know what we're here for. You definitely know what we're here for. We're going to take a look at the yacht. Good old hijacked. Let's see what's going on here. Well, it is obviously low resolution, but it is faithful. And that's the key thing. It matches hijacked pretty well, so I'm glad they put in that detail. And just having it here just makes Cove a little bit cooler, in my opinion. So this island may be small and doesn't have collision, but what is interesting is that its textures are actually pretty good quality. They look good. I was expecting something with low polygon count and everything like that, but no, looks good. So Rush actually does have a couple interesting things, and it isn't one of my favorite maps out of bounds, but it does have something about it that's pretty cool. So looking in these garages, there's nothing really special going on here, unfortunately. This room has a little bit of something, like walls and stuff, but that's about it. Going through the inaccessible door, and it will lead you to a room that's actually there. It's not, like, fully fledged or anything like that. Some of the functions are a little funny, but... No, it's the fact that there's a room here that's modeled and everything, and has some semblance of proper physics. Here, too, actually. Which is pretty cool. So checking this garage here, there's not really anything in here, unfortunately, but I'm not going to complain too much because we got some pretty cool rooms with the other stuff. And next up, I wanted to check the back building of the spawn to see what was here. And while it isn't much, at least they have a bit of a room going on. They got something here, I can tell you that much. From here, I wanted to see what was going on beyond the counter. And, uh, well, it's not something too amazing or anything like that. It's cool to get a closer look at these guns and everything that comes with it. So, here's a cool little thing. So, there is a door up here that leads to a set of stairs that will eventually lead to the spectator room. And if you didn't know this existed, because I will tell you, you can see this from the map itself. But if you didn't know it existed, it's okay. I don't either. We're too busy firing at each other to pay attention. So, now we're out of bounds, and this is where things get interesting. The road here had collision, so I decided to follow it. I wanted to see how far I could go with it. A little parking lot here with nothing going on in here. That was okay. Of course, this leads us to the back area of the spawn. The building with no collision in it either. The road continues. I follow it. Same stuff as usual. Let's see how the road meets its demise, right? So I keep following the road. It has collision this entire time. And then it goes into a bunch of trees and it just abruptly ends from there. Okay, typical Black Ops 2 fashion, nothing against that. So I decide to fly- Oh, the grass has collision. 
And then I see another part of the road, and I want to see where it leads. Okay, so it goes under a hill, supposedly? Wait, this has collision too, mostly. What is going on here? Some trees are clipped under the ground, but that's okay. Wait, this has collision too. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the part where I figured out that Rush is basically all collision on the other side of the map. And in that sense, it's reminiscent of Drone. I don't know what it is about lands with collision, but it's fun just to run in a big empty open space at top speed and everything. And just be able to maneuver just about everywhere with no problems. Of course, we've got another road there. Nothing surprising here. I wanted to try dolphin diving here. That's the one thing I realized. If you have low gravity, super jump, and super speed on, it's a little bit tricky to dolphin dive, but once you pull it off, it's super fun. But yeah, you can just get a really big view of Rush here. It's a big map. Like, at least if you're including its out of bounds section. But yeah, it was fun just to explore around and everything. There was one thing I did notice, though, that I thought was a little peculiar. There's water here, which is pretty cool. So, of course, I tried to swim in it and realized I couldn't. There was an invisible floor here. And so I decided, okay, I'll no clip through it, which you can, in fact, swim in it. So it is swimmable, kind of. You can't surface out of it. You have to no clip to get out. But I still thought it was pretty cool. There was a shadow here that I found in this rectangle that will consume more or less of the tile it's in, depending on how high you are from it. So if you're right up to it, it won't really be there. But if you fly right up, it'll consume the whole thing. However, you can fly right back down and it'll recede. But everybody, that's going to end this video. I know that Vengeance didn't quite have as much content as you may have hoped, but we only have one more map pack before we are done multiplayer, so you'll get that some point next week. I want to thank you all for watching, wish you a wonderful day, and uh, take care for now. Goodbye.